video out there uh, because um, it reaches uh, more people than answering individual posts on Facebook um, and on YouTube. Um, and for anybody who's watching my, my videos, you know I like to compare figures. Uh, so I'm going to compare some similarities um, with the uh, COVID-19 virus. I'm going to compare that with the 1976 H3N2 swine flu virus outbreak. Um, so the today's virus um, is the SARS-2 COV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. Uh, on February the 4th, 1976, a young soldier called David Lewis, he died of a new virus. Um, and it was predicted it would see the return of the 1918 H1N1 Spanish flu virus, which killed around um, 17 um, to 50 million people. I know there's a big disparity there, but that's the um, that's the uh, information that I can find. I think most pe people uh, settle on the figure of 40 million people die dying. Um, and all the newspapers ran the, um, the story of the upcoming apocalypse, which would kill millions. Now, in that year, um, there was a rush vaccine, um, which caused 450 cases of the Gull and Bar syndrome. That's a rare neuro neurological disorder in the public um, who accepted the inoculation. Uh, and in 1976, 100,000 Americans died and 1 million died worldwide of that virus. It sounds familiar to today's uh, coronavirus stretcher. Um, the only difference is they didn't crash their economies and lock down healthy people with no underlying conditions. Okay, small businesses have gone bankrupt. Millions are on the dole. Homeowners are losing the, their homes. Um, and there seems no end to this uh, lockdown. Okay, so um, and the most unforgivable thing of all is the elderly. I spoke to an elderly lady on the phone the other day. She has been locked in her room for six months. She's not allowed to have human contact. She's not seen her family. The only people she's seen are the people in the nursing home who are looking after her. They've told her she cannot go into the garden because she will have to go through the communal area. Nobody in nursing home, any, everybody in nursing homes are not allowed in the communal area within the home at the moment. Okay. Also, do not resuscitate orders have been written um, for anybody that are in nursing homes. So if anything happens to them, then they, they therefore do not resuscitate. Also, doctors are not going into nursing homes and treating the elderly. So anybody, um, if they fall ill in the nursing home, whether it be from the virus or anything else, they're not being admitted to hospital. They're being left to die. Okay. Yes, but there has been some um, winners out of all of this. Um, the top 12 oligarchs have seen their combined... Uh, their combined wealth increased by 40%. So that's about $283 billion. $283 billion. While you lot, while we lot, the public are on the dole or losing our jobs. We'll never, there'll be people out there that will never go back to their jobs after this. Okay? Um, also, um, the big tech companies have seen their profits um the profits in the last six months top what they earned in the last 10 years, okay? Uh, to date, um, the, the COVID-19 death total worldwide is seven, 781,000. Now, that figure um, will be um, looked at because the UK government have um, are going to going to look at their figures because there's been people who have been put on their death certificate as dying of COVID-19 and they've died of something else. So that figure um, will be looked at somewhere down the line. So that means 99.97% do not succumb to the virus. That makes um, about 0.26% who die of the virus, and most of them have got life-threatening conditions. And the most and, and the common cold um, has always been dangerous for patients in the late stages of heart disease, CPOD, and diabetes. Also, a, a, obesity that's causing a problem. Um, indeed, in the last five weeks in a row, um, it's been below the the five-year national average. Um, so we keep hearing the science is being rushed to get a vaccine for the COVID-19. The same thing happened in 1976 to leave the public uh, maimed and disabled. Uh, since 1986, um, there's been no finan 
potential liability against the companies producing vaccines. Uh, and if the recipient of the vaccines are damaged, um, it comes out of the public purse, so the taxpayer pays for their own damages. So if any of us are damaged with that vaccine, we have to pay for that. Uh, taxpayers pay for it. Okay? Not the big companies who are going to be making uh, millions, probably billions from the vaccine. Okay? Rus vaccines is a con concern to me and to a great deal of people. Um, you know, I'm not against vaccines, but I am alert to the fact that it's being said nothing will go back to normal until all 7.8 billion people on this planet have been vaccinated. Yep. Um, we keep, and we've been told... Over and over again, we keep hearing the mantra in the news, uh, we better get used to the new normal. Well, there is nothing normal about what is going on, okay? Two metres apart, masks, keep washing your hands, keep getting rid of your, your flora and fauna, your, your, your good bacteria, uh, yeah? So this is a big experiment because this has never been done before. So, yeah, the outcome of what we're all doing with, with, with the washing of hands and the wearing of masks, we, we're yet to see the outcome of that somewhere down the line in the, in the future, okay? And there's nothing normal about what is going on and the public should not be coerced into taking a vaccine under the threat that nothing will go back to normal until the entire population on the planet have been vaccinated. We should have a choice. We should always have a choice, okay? People like Ferguson in the UK, the Imperial um, College of London, who predicted, they actually predicted that 2 million Americans would die. Uh, also, that uh, half a million in the UK would die. Well, we know that's um, completely um, nonsense because we're nowhere near those figures. And I think it was based on something like 98% uh, of the um, population of America in the UK succumbing to the virus so completely rubbish also ferguson the government uh paid politicians they've they've got vested interest in vaccines they've all got shares in the vaccine that is called um that's a conflict of interest uh, and most good businesses have a conflict of interest policy so um that needs looking at um okay there's never been um a coronavirus um vaccine ever. There's been seven coronaviruses since the 1960s. They've never found a vaccine for HIV. They've never found a vaccine for HIV and the flu vaccines are patchy at, at best. Okay. Um, the, the vaccine that they're rushing through won't have been trialed properly. Um, and I want to know what's going to be in this vaccine. Um, there's no incentive co for companies uh, to test for safety of the vaccines because there's no financial liability. And I want to know what is the push for mandatory vaccines there's never there's never been mandatory vaccines ever you know this is straight out of the mangala play mengele playbook the nazi germany would have been really impressed with what's going on right now because not even there could have could have dreamt this one up okay um just want to um sort of people in the uk i want you to be aware that the covid19 bill um is up for review um, that that's given the, the government a, a lot of powers, like being able to um, take your children away from you if it's deemed that they've got the coronavirus. Um, they can take people, um, seize people's properties. Um, so they've got a lot of powers at the moment, and the bill originally was rushed through. Um, so that is up for review. So if anybody um, is concerned about that, um, then what I would suggest is you need to write to your local MP um, about your concerns and you need to ask them which way they're going to be voting. Okay, so we live in, in a democracy um, and if we're not happy with policies in place then we can make a change um, by writing to our local MPs, electorates and we can tell the Minister of Health, we can give them a phone call and tell them what we're not happy with. So I urge anyone who is concerned about what is happening worldwide right now or in their own country to contact their MP while we still live in a democratic society because our rights have been taken away from us uh, by the day, by the minute. Um, so I'm going to leave you with um, a little thought. So if a butterfly's wing can cause an effect hundreds of miles away just by flapping at the right point in space-time, 
then we can um, so then we can make a difference. There's billions of people on this planet right now. Uh, we can come together and create the change that we want by making our voices heard. Now is the time to speak up for a better future for your children and your children's children. So we need to speak up right now.